right, I'm here to talk about the theorem that a sequence is Cauchy if and only if it's convergent. And convergent implies Cauchy we're going to do in class. For Cauchy implies convergent, though, we have a little problem because for something to be convergent, we need to know the limit. So we need to figure out a candidate for the limit. Uh, and we can do this by using the fact that Cauchy sequences are bounded. That's a previous lemma. That implies that there's a convergent subsequence. And we're going to use this limit. We have a convergent subsequence. Let's call it maybe x sub n1, x sub n2, da 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 da, da x sub nk, da 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 da. Maybe that's a convergent subsequence, and this is going to go to x. Now notice, for example, the convergent subsequence, this is kind of weird numbering, n sub 1, n sub 2. The reason why we have that is because our convergent subsequence might be, say, x5, x17, x99, da 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 da. So we might just pick out certain, uh, you know, things of the original sequence. Oh, by the way, the original sequence, uh, maybe I should write down as x sub n is Cauchy. Right, the problem is we still want to have a way of calling this the first term, this one the second, and this the third. So what we do is we call this one n sub 1, where n sub 1 happens to equal 5. We call this one n sub 2, meaning the second term of the, of the subsequence. So that one happens to equal 17. n sub 3 would happen to equal 99. n sub 4, I don't know what it is, but it's the fourth term of the sequence. So whatever the limit is of this, sub, of this uh, subsequence, that's going to be our candidate for the limit. So what we want to do is two, we want to prove, we need to prove it's convergent, uh, that there exists an n such that, uh, let's say, right, you always start with let epsilon be bigger than zero. Prove that there exists an n such that x sub n minus x is less than epsilon for all n bigger than or equal to capital N. That's what we want to prove. And the way we're going to do that is this. We're going to have some x sub n minus x. And that's going to be equal to, I'm going to put in something in the subsequence here which I'm going to call x sub n sub capital K, x sub n sub capital K minus x. Oh, I can use a triangle inequality here to get x sub n minus x sub n sub capital K plus x sub n sub capital K minus x which is going to be less than, we want it to be less than epsilon eventually. So I have two things, but notice I know more about these two things. That's the purpose of the triangle inequality. This I can use the fact that it's Cauchy, and this I can use the fact that the subsequence, x sub n sub little k, goes to x. So I can make th that both of these are less than or equal to epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2 equals epsilon. So now it's only a matter of kind of finding out what these n's and these n sub k's need to be. So what I can say is that there exists an n1 such that x sub n minus x sub m is less than anything I want. So I'm going to pick x sub n over 2 for all n and m bigger than or equal to n1. I also know, so now it's going to take care of this. I'm just going to make sure that uh, my n and my n sub k here are bigger than n1. There also exists, uh, how should I say this? I should say an n sub 2 such that x sub n sub little k minus x is less than epsilon over 2, epsilon over 2, for all little k bigger than or equal to n over 2. And notice over here in my little example, in all of these cases, here k is 1, n sub k is 5. Here k is 2, n sub k is this. So we always know that n sub k is going to be bigger than or equal to k. So just notice this. 99 is certainly bigger than 3. So what we can do is we can pick n equal to the max of n1 and m2. And then, you know what, I'm going to split this into a second screencast that's going to be about a minute long. So I'll stop right here.